What's going on everybody? Alex will be here again. Thanks for dropping by. It's Friday here, so happy Friday everybody. Or honestly, happy whatever other day of the week this happens to be on your television screen. I wanted to talk a little bit today about what makes up the inside of Chestnut Evo and specifically focus on the way that Chestnut Evo is going to be different as far as its ability to interact with some of these online chess websites like chess.com, Lee Chess. How is the Chestnut Evo going to be different in that respect and how that difference is going to be hopefully significant to some people in not only being able to understand what kind of differentiates the Chestnut Evo but also give us an idea as far as what hopefully we'll be seeing in the future with some of the other chess boards. Okay, so traditionally we had places like chess.com, Lee Chess that allowed you to be able to do some stuff like playing against other people, solving chess puzzles, doing some lessons. They still do, but to a sort of a larger degree now, things have expanded on Lee Chess, things have expanded at chess.com. But at some point, we started seeing these electronic chess boards like the DGT originally. And the DGT was a way that you could hook the board up, physical board, to your computer and Lee Chess have thought, hey, it wouldn't it be nice to actually integrate with these particular boards? And so what they happened to do is they started providing this essentially API data. And API data, I guess it's, it's hard to wrap your head around the idea of API, which is application programming interface. But if you could think about it visually as like a set of strings that are coming out from a puppet, and these strings are essentially what a normal electronic chessboard will look for. And that's the key question. It will look for these strings that are provided by places like chess.com and lead chess. And it will latch on to those strings and it will be able to create a link to where it can interact and you can play on a electronic chessboard with places like chess.com. You might think of it at first that it, it should be common sense. We have this, this connection and we have the interaction the way we should. However, ask yourself that what kind of stuff can you do with an electronic chess board, whether it's like Square Off or Chess Up or DGT, what can you do on chess.com that, with that particular board? It's obvious that if you open up your computer, you can do a whole lot on chess.com. You can do a whole lot on, on lead chess. But what can you actually do with an electronic chess board? Well, we can play games, um, you know, different time intervals and whatnot, rapid, classic, blitz, what have you. Can we solve puzzles? Some can, but it's tricky. And in fact, if you are familiar with Square Off, if you're familiar with some of the videos I did, did of Square Off, it uh, actually kind of sort of restricts you to be have to use the Square Off application most of the time to, to log in into chess.com to Lee Chess. And then from there, it provides you with limited options. In fact, on the Square Off application, it allows you to utilize the, their own application sort of uh, options and stuff to choose. Okay, what kind of game I'm gonna play on chess.com? What, kind of, what kind of time interval? And then it sends a request into chess.com and if chess.com has the necessary API data it'll link in and then you'll be able to play that game. You might say to yourself well that's how it's always been done and if I wanted to do chess lessons I just open up my computer and kind of go from there and if I wanted to play games that's fine. What will make the Chestnut Evo different is that the Chestnut Evo will actually operate in a whole new different way. The Chestnut Evo has a built-in NPU neural network processor that will work together with what the Chestnut uh, engineering team has been developing and perfecting called Vision Chess. And these two things together will basically utilize the fact that we have a present screen here to basically act as eyes and scan the screen and then be able to detect while you're browsing, whether it's on chess.com, Lee Chess, Chess Kid, while you're browsing on that particular web page, it will detect the presence of a chess board. Then what it will do is it will feed it into Vision Chess and Vision Chess will present the information that's on the screen into your board. 
whether or not, and here's the key, whether or not that particular chess board or that presentation had any API to begin with. So for a regular chess board, if it, you were somehow on your phone and you were connected to your chess board, you were going through and browsing and you found a particular game with notation, but it didn't have the API because it, it wasn't even designed to be used with the board. The board won't do anything with it. It'll just stay quiet. Where in, in this case, what happens is it recognizes and scans your screen. It recognizes a game. It'll scan it, extrapolate the data that's necessary for it to become interactive, essentially feed it through Vision Chess. Vision Chess will actually throw it on your board with all the lights and everything and the fact that we have individual chess piece recognition basically will tell you where the pieces need to be for this particular position if it's not in the beginning of the game for example and then once you set up the position you're essentially every time you're moving a piece to a different square that information gets fed back into vision chess that that will interact with the npu and interact with that particular uh, whether it's a, it's a game or whether it was just basically you reading some kind of a PGN or you're reading a book or something. And then what happens is once you set up the position, you're actually going to be able to follow through and in such a way that you can actually click uh, the subsequent moves. And because of this seamless interaction, you're able to basically see how the game is going on, how the game is played out, even if it's not your game, even if it's not an active game, it'll actually feed it and you will be able to interact with it. That opens up a whole new array of things like lessons, uh, like reading books, essentially. Lessons is the biggest thing because now, even if the API data is not provided, even if that particular lesson, whether it's chess.com or Elite Chess, was never intended to be used with an electronic chess board up until now, essentially now it can be used okay now because of the way that this kind of surpasses its need to have the api data with the vision chess and the npu that's built in it essentially will help you interact with the the particular chess website in many new ways that you didn't even think that would be possible before using an electronic chessboard essentially these places, chess.com, Lee Chess, I'm not even talking about Chess Kid because when I initially was sort of exploring this board and I went to the learning section and I went to the online play section and I saw the Chess Kid, at first I was like, I guess Chess Kid jumped on board with the other electronic chess boards. It's good to see. Chess Kid actually does not provide the API data for you to, to, to utilize it in such a way. That's why on Square Off, that's why on DGT, we only have the ability to, to link the board to chess.com and Lee Chess. That's what it's always been, and there's no other, essentially, applications that you can use for the most part. Or if there are applications, they're very limited in its ability to essentially interact with the board. This doesn't need API, and if the application says, now wait a minute, I wasn't designed in such a way that you can utilize an electronic chessboard, Chestnut Evo essentially looks at it and says, I don't care. I'm still going to be able to interact with you, whether you like it or not, whether you're prepared for it or not. Essentially, that's the coolest part about what's going to make this board so much more advanced. And the coolest part, in my opinion, is looking ahead I feel like the the fact that it uses a different way to interact with these chess boards will open up so much more possibility of us seeing more and more third-party applications on here uh, that essentially might not even be developed to interact with the API. They may not never have been developed to be utilized with an electronic chess board will suddenly be something that Chestnut Evo will really not have a problem with. So that's kind of where we're going that's kind of how this board is different fundamentally so let me just bring up my camera a little bit closer so i can show you in practice how this looks and hopefully we'll give you guys some examples i look forward to be able to give you more examples in the future as they do more updates by the way they are doing updates as the board is coming closer and closer to mainstream production now the recent update, I've seen that you can flip the board, 
around. So we haven't seen that previously, but with the new update, so let's say you're playing against somebody and suddenly it randomly assigned you with dark pieces, but the dark pieces are on that side of the board and then the light pieces are on this side of the board, the uh, screen will automatically flip for you. So that way you don't have to have that issue to where, okay, now we have to reset up pieces or anything or play with the screen upside down. Um, how does this technology work? Well, here in this case, we see I go to puzzles, for example. We got a puzzle, all of a sudden it recognizes the chessboard right over here, you utilizing the chess vision technology. It feeds that information to the board immediately upon recognition of this. And it tells you to set up the pieces in this particular fashion. So once you do set the pieces up the way that they want you to, essentially, it recognized the board here. It, it told me to go ahead and set up the position. Once I set up the pieces, it was okay. So it feed, it's feeding back now that I've set up all the pieces where I need to. Now let's see if it interacts with the puzzle the way it should. Pick up the piece, we go here. Yep. So just like playing a game. Yep. And then we go here. There we go. Solved. Next. That is really cool. And then you set up the, the other pieces. The chess kit here, there's no way that other electronic boards will be able to right now work with this because the API data is not provided and therefore you can't do it. But with this vision chess technology, it essentially takes control of what's provided on the screen, feeds it back to the board, shows you where all the pieces need to be, and then goes from there essentially, um, essentially allows you to take control of what you would otherwise take control with a mouse, but with an actual board. And that's kind of really cool. And like I said, it will put us in a situation where in the future, for example, if we go to the application, they got the um, Chess PGN Master, things where you can upload books, upload the electronic books, and therefore you can essentially read the book. And we've seen that with like deep frits and stuff to where you can upload an electronic book and, and be able to follow the notation. But I am excited to, once all this gets developed, I'm excited to be able to show you guys some examples of what it would be like to actually upload a book and actually go through a book, read it, and go through the individualized notation of the games as examples. But uh, another thing I'll show you guys, for example, Right over here, directly on chess.com when you go to the learn section. Now, check this out, guys. I'm not even logged in over here, and you're already getting all this stuff, which is really, really cool. And let me show you an example in the opening section. If you go to the openings, you get all these different openings. The Sicilian defense, the French defense, Rui Lopez opening, Caracan, Italian game, all these different ones. So let's say, for example, I click on the... Karakan defense, okay? And <clears throat> normally, if you wanted to explore these openings, the way that you do this is not with an electronic chessboard, but you just be online on your computer, uh, maybe on your phone, but when you go here and you are you get to, to about middle of the screen, it scans, essentially the chess vision scans your entire screen, and if, if it finds like a game going on with notations, kind of like this, Essentially, it allows you to control, so it, it, it scans it, feeds it to your board, allows you to interact with it in a way that it would not find with other chess boards, essentially. This is due to this built-in NPU and due to this vision chess technology, essentially. So that's really cool, in my opinion. Once again, because it creates for the ability of the chess board to get so much more out of like chess.com and so much more out of Lee Chess and even work with Chess Kid, essentially. Alrighty, well, hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat interesting, somewhat informative. Be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comments below how this information may kind of alter your way of thinking about how these uh, chess boards operate in general, whether this information was something that's already been familiar to you or if this is new information let me know as well. Um, as always, hope you guys have a great weekend. Hopefully you guys have a great day. Stay productive, play more chess, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.